Welcome. You have entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simron. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Empower yourself, broaden your mind, open your heart, and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simron. Happy Spring Equinox. I hope that you are awaking to the day full of sunshine and opening to the smell of rebirth. We are in a moment where you can close the doors to the winter and allow those seeds to begin sprouting and germinating within the soil, especially with this particular year. This is a very powerful dragon year, and the energy is ripe and ready for you to unfold. This spring equinox, as is every equinox, is about the balance between night and day. It's when the sun and the darkness are at equal points all around the world. And that speaks a lot to the balance that we can unfold in our lives in the coming months to really take a moment to reflect, to see how we can really balance out all aspects of ourselves. It also has to do with the two energy because this day is a two day and March happens to be an 11 energy month uh, this particular year. And two has very much to do with partnership. And when I have been contemplating the last few days, and particularly meditating yesterday, the word tsunami kept coming into my mind, and it felt like a tsunami of abundance, a tsunami of awareness, a tsunami of heightening and rising. And again this morning, that word showed up again. And with it being the spring equinox, I began thinking of the meanings and the symbolisms of different things. And since I love talking about conversations with the universe, I want to share that my name is very significant to you. The name Simran is an ancient Sanskrit word that means divine remembrance or translated means remembrance of being the divine, being so united and partnered with the divine that you have that remembrance of being and expressing that in the world. And so when I say I am Simran, yes, it's my name, but I really put that there more so so that you can say I am Simran. I am the divine remembrance of the sacred and my guest today, her name has some beautiful meanings as well. Heather means lover of nature and someone that doesn't necessarily need others for happiness. It's self-sufficiency. Her name means abundance. And Ogilvy means a high place. So when I weave all of the signs and symbolism together, it brings forth a spring equinox in partnership with self, to really understand that we're here to rise to the high place of divine remembrance through the love of our own nature, through this understanding that we are independent and self-sufficient within ourselves, and that we can bring that to the world. My guest today is Heather Ogilvie, and she is a visionary empowerment catalyst hailing from Scotland. She's a renowned elite turnaround consultant, transforming companies globally with strategic prowess. But beyond the boardroom, Heather's a compassionate emotional eating specialist, guiding individuals to healthier lives, but she's also an animal communicator. She has a couple of different tarot channels where she offers beautiful guidance and life coaching. One is called Pisces Magic Tarot, and the other one is Angel's Dog Tarot that has that animal communication guidance on it. And she also has her own podcast on YouTube called Isla Wellness. And so we're going to have a conversation that weaves in and out of a lot of places today because she has a variety of expertises, including that of abundance and self-sufficiency. She is the author of from Zero to Money Hero, The Ultimate Guide for Young Adults to Master the Art of Making Money. Welcome, Heather, to 1111 Talk Radio. It's a joy to have you here. Simran, thank you so much. And what a beautiful introduction. And 
I was just thinking yesterday what a beautiful name you had, and I just feel bowled over by how you've presented my name as well. I, it feels like I've touched myself in a very different way. Thank you so much. Isn't that, though, part of what we are here to do in this growing sense of awareness? I know that you work with individuals to bring them more and more into themselves through a variety of ways. And I think that so often it is our doubt, our imposter syndrome, our need to feel we have to attain more education or be more of something before we can really own who we are. But yet our name is our nature, and it's what we're here to embody and grow into. What do you think about um, your own path in terms of growing into your name, or did you always kind of feel like those words were part of who you are, and it was more of an unfolding of an experience that was taking place? Um, that's very, uh, it's quite a deep journey that I've been on about my name, and so the relevance for me is is very strong. Self-worth has featured as a struggle for me, but not self, not imposter syndrome, not self-confidence. So there's some real subtleties about defining who we are. And I think at the heart of that is the need to feel worthy. And when we embark out into the world, we start to gather labels. And it's something that I, through my career, got very proud of the labels I was given. I, as I as I progressed through business quite rapidly, I got a, a new title every year and it became a very defining part of who I was. But at the same time, some of my titles were, um, I found, held me back. So, for example, I was an accountant and I found that name quite boring because there's a there's a boring kind of um, uh, association with it. <laughs> Forgive me for if you're an accountant and you love it for those people who are listening. Um, but I found that if I mentioned I was an accountant, people would just switch off from me. So as I have progressed through life, I've become more and more grounded back into my own name so it's almost always almost like a divergence into seeking those external kind of recognitions of your progression through life and I also sadly got unmarried having got married and recently reverted to my um, maiden name and it felt like that was a real coming back to myself although I love my married name and I love being married it was a reconvergence with the kind of roots of who I was to bring Heather and Ogilvy back together so and and now I don't really want any of the titles. I mean, they're helpful for other people just to describe who I might be, um, but not who I am, or who I might be to them, but not who I am at, at my heart and center. And when I saw you called yourself, I am Simran. I was just like that really, really vibes with me because I, I am Heather. I, I'm I, you know, the Ogilvy bit, bit is special too for me, um, but I am Heather is uh, really at the heart of my worth and at the heart of my soul as well, not just my kind of ego's worth. So I think the journey back to your name is also a journey back to your soul, um, and, and you have to go through this journey of your ego. And some people don't come back to their soul, um, but I think that is something that's just so profoundly beautiful when we can achieve it. I, th I think you've touched on something really important because it is the human journey for us to venture out into the world. And in that venturing, we are going to attain different identities, different titles, different places that feel like expansions of ourself. And yet the soul journey then kind of brings us back around full circle where it's almost as if we have to then start taking off these different cloaks that we put on ourselves because to be essence, to be in the complete union of spirit we can't have any of those labels or identities. So that's really powerful as to how you express that in your own life. Thank you. And, and I think just to add a layer to that, that when we pick up a label or somebody gives us a label and, you know, we're, we're, we're delighted with that label, for example, you know, you might become a manager of something or a director or something, for example, in the business world. Um, but there comes a point in time where, if you're on a growth journey, you kind of outgrow that label, but there's a pain of letting it go. And and, a, and, a, and an attachment to a label kind of almost keep you constricted longer than you need to. And other people's expectations of who you are with that label can also keep you very constricted. Um, so there's a, there's a huge power in that name. There's a huge power in remembering to return to who you are. And I think if I could start my journey again, it would be to 
always remember to come back and ground myself in the reality of who I was. I think I did that reasonably well in my downtime, but not um, to the extent that I was able to um, kind of balance all of the aspects of what that meant at the time. Balance is such a necessary part, and yet it is very much like the ocean waves. It comes and goes throughout our lives, depending (laughs) on where we are, right? Uh Um, What you've said about identity, it kind of takes me to your book, and and maybe that's where we'll start off, um, in regard to a conversation around abundance, because I know that this year is a lot about people growing, and we are at a time where individuals are really being called to step more into their true self, their their most powerful self, and whether they follow that in terms of what they think their ego wants or whether they really do listen to the soul, it has a lot to do with confidence. And you have a line that opens the book from Zero to Money Hero, the ultimate guide for young adults to master the art of making money. And the line is, money confidence is not the same as personal confidence. Mm -hmm. Could you express a little more around that? Yes, for certain. Um, uh, and more, perhaps it's easier to explain from an observational point of view. Um, there are people who are very, very confident out in the world who aren't able somehow to make a good living for themselves. And conversely, there are people who feel like they're almost, you know, their energy, you, you can't even necessarily perceive it or see, see it. Um, but somehow they've managed to gather in a lot of money. And and so the two don't go hand in hand. So confidence in in of itself is in part a choice because it's how you project yourself onto the outside so self-worth is on the inside confidence is how you manage people on the outside of you and money is something on the outside of us as well so money confidence and self-confidence money is an energy that you um it's it's the interchange point between two people exchanging something of value so somebody can be very very confident but just don't doesn't know how to manage money and being a turnaround consultant, I've gone into many businesses where people have built a really, really good business and been very confident in their ability to perhaps grow their product or understand their um, service that they're putting out into the world, but they don't have the confidence to charge the right amount of money or they don't have the confidence to learn the skills needed to understand what their cash flow is, for example. So they almost like push that part of their business away, don't want to look at it and feel that they're not not able to access it. But that in turn leads them to get to the stage where, you know, they don't really know what's going on financially for their business, which is why I actually ended up writing that book, because I wanted to take it back to the real grassroots of learning before you leave school, that money is something that you should feel very confident. It's just a tool that helps you navigate through the world. How you show up to other people is a, is a different thing. Your confidence to, to the um, exchange of um, who you are on the other side of is different to your confidence in asking for money. I, I, when I was younger, I always used to think, I wonder why they don't teach us about money in school. <laughs> and when I saw that that's part of your mission for this, I just felt that was so powerful. And so I do want to mention to anyone listening, if you've got a young adult or if you have a school system or, or uh, organization that can support getting this book to the young people, it is one of the missions that Heather has. And I would invite you to get in touch with her at her website. You also talk about personal confidence is not the same as self-esteem or self-worth, because I Mm -hmm. think so often people do equate all three of those together, and and then there's a disconnect between self-value and those. So can you kind of break down what you mean by personal confidence and the distinctions between self-esteem, self-worth, and self-value when it comes to abundance? Uh, I can. I think self-esteem and self-worth, I struggle a little bit to define. Um, that it's, it's like there's a very, very thin difference between them. But self-worth is is how you choose to value yourself. And I think at the heart of everything is um, is self-worth. I actually would, and I have talked about it being perhaps one of the biggest viruses that humans have managed to invent for themselves. Because that's the that's the sort of inner critic that talks ourselves down that says that we're not valuable enough to achieve um, self esteem. I'm not 100 percent sure of the actual difference between those, but when you and self worth, the self value aspect of it starts to. It's almost like there's a bubbling up energetically from self worth, which is kind of around your, you know, the seat of your I am basically your 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 personal um, 
expression. And then you sort of self-esteem perhaps comes up to your throat, self-value comes out of your throat and starts to talk to the external world and self-confidence is that energetic mask that you put on to 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 present yourself to the world. And a lot of self-confident people are actually very um, low on self-worth, but they use self-confidence as a way of almost masking that. So so there's a real difference between kind of like an inward an inward emotion into a feeling, which is self-esteem, into a projection a thought which is self-value into an expression to the external world which is self-confidence I think that's the best way I can probably describe them if that makes sense it does and it also brings up this idea of alignment we we talk a lot on the show about getting into alignment mentally emotionally physically spiritually energetically Mm -hmm. but this also shows the subtleties of alignment within a certain thread to, to where we really enhance the overall experience and then align that to an embodiment within the body. Yes, and I think I I have been through this journey and I'm sure many people are doing the same where we live our lives out of a mental body for a lot of our lives and we're trained into doing that from a very early age and we're sort of trained to use the left part of our brain, that action getting things done, use your intellect, fight or flight, (laughs) your sympathetic nervous system, which is anything but sympathetic. And we get stuck in that because we then get tasked with meeting goals and expectations on a very, very regular basis. And we start to self-criticize when we're not meeting those expectations. And balancing yourself back into your parasympathetic nervous system, self-compassion. I I actually had to go to psychotherapy to be taught about how to be self-compassionate after many years of being an adult. And and that opened up a whole new world to me because as soon as you start being kind to yourself, um, you start to connect to your emotional body. And that's pretty deep. Um, And, uh, you know, some of the work that I've been doing and teaching people, particularly around eating, for example, is um, to to learn to feel your feelings because we get taught to suppress our feelings. And when we learn to feel our feelings, we suddenly get in touch with our intuition. We suddenly get in touch with our entric nervous system, which is the kind of seat of our intuition. And then the whole spiritual world starts to open up because we're really feeling, we're feeling the world through the physical aspects of our body that are actually there and designed and have the mechanics to feel the external world. So it's quite some journey and it, it actually starts with self-compassion um, and um deciding choosing not to be hard on yourself and and then everything starts to transform it it's really powerful because and i want to go back to something that you said and and you were talking about self doubt as a virus of the mind and i think we do live a lot in our heads i think most of the world does especially mm-hmm. developed societies we've gotten to this point where we really are in the mental body and a lot of people that think they are loving or think they are kind they're actually just thinking they're they're still not dropped down into the body and actually mm-hmm. feeling those feelings and so to 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 move from these constructs of the mind back into the body is not only necessary for how we move forward as a humanity but it is what brings fulfillment and joy and peace and ecstasy and creativity and all of these things back to our lives when you were moving through your work life and you decided to um, move toward the more spiritual and you embarked on the animal communication course talk a little bit about how that shift from whatever kind of therapy you were going through to the questions of 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 what took place next that led you to the animal communication and ultimately the work you're doing now um, I'd like to say I, I I chose the path, but I absolutely didn't. <laughs> um, I was definitely chosen to to go on that path. Um, so the the therapy was only eight weeks, and it was a short stint because I had had quite a big trauma moment um, a few months before, um, and uh, I became hypersensitive to energy. But at the time, I thought it was something wrong with me. But I, I subsequently discovered that actually I was picking up on the the incongruent pain of humanity in, in, in general. So that difference between what the head thinks it should be thinking and feeling versus what the actual human body is thinking and feeling. And it took me quite a long time and a lot of research to actually understand that. 
But um, when I couldn't even walk into a supermarket and go shopping without running out, I thought there was something wrong with me. Um, but I, I learned that I wasn't. That wasn't. It was. It was that I'd become hypersensitive. And, and I think a lot of people, I just mentioned now with animal communication, um, what I've observed um, with other people that I've studied with is that um, many people who've had some kind of trauma, um, sadly, and quite often in young, in a, at a young age. Um, are more heightened sensitivity wise to the energy of um, potential attack, I guess. Um, so the intuition is heightened by people who've been through a, a situation where they've had to be more aware of feeling the energy. Um, so therapy was two or three years before animal communication. I was led on a merry dance by the universe um, in terms of pennies and signs and synchronicities and people popping up <laughs> in random places. Um, and what ultimately happened is I was on a book writing course and a um, friend of mine mentioned, sorry, I must must just say that that book writing course gave me permission to start to talk about spiritual energy, which I had started to tune into, but not in a great way. It was, it was, it was something in my background. It was a, it was a taboo. I couldn't really talk about it and, and I couldn't talk about it with my friend's group. So I joined this American book writing course and this lady mentioned that she had a, an animal communicator connect to her cat. And, um, I had told her things that there's no way this lady could have known. She was on the other side of America. And um, so my dog had some problems at the time. And I got in touch with this lady, Julie. And the conversation that ensued um, saved my dog's life. He had a problem with his leg um, and he had a, a problem when he was drinking, which we thought might be something to do with his teeth. Um, and she told me that he had a pain in his sinus and... I've, the vet said there's nothing that they could do to have a look at this, but I went to a physiotherapist because of his leg. And she took a picture of his face and clear as day, there was a blockage in his sinus. And that led to a, a, you know, a, a longer story about him going and getting a CT scan. Anyway, in his recovery, I found another animal communicator to help me with his recovery because he had a huge operation to deal with this issue. And she persuaded me to um, train as a communicator. And she said, it's something we can all do. And the other, the other lady, the first lady had said the same thing to me. And I was just fascinated by the whole concept. So um, I, I just couldn't contain my curiosity about what would happen if I chose to go and try this out and I went on a 12-week course found out that everybody who goes on these courses can start to communicate and then practiced and, it, and it's pretty much in a way as straightforward as that but the profound moments that follow when you start to get detailed feedback from an owner that you've never seen and a dog that you've never seen um, who verify things that you're getting through intuitively thoughts words images feelings um, those things build your confidence. Um, and I'm now at the stage where I can feel the pain in my body of an animal that has an issue in its body. Um, and so, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, there was a, a friend's dog who was urinating and was stressed and was going to go to the vet. And we tuned into it and I just felt this overwhelming pain in it in my right ear. And um, the animal wasn't showing any sign of pain in its ear but it went to the vet to get its check out for its urine problem and uh, the owner asked the vet to check its ear and they found buried deep in its ear um, one of the worst um, ear infections the vet had ever seen and if that animal hadn't transferred its pain into my ear it would never have been found that is mind-blowing and it's hugely important to science it's hugely important to how we understand how our body works, how we understand what animals can actually do. And the intelligence that's out in the world is just, it's kind of blown my mind. So yeah, from a trauma moment, um, which opened up my intuitive, um, I guess, feeling senses, it's a, it was probably about a four or five year journey of different courses and trying out things. But now to the extent where I'm just so confident that it's so real that I can't not talk about it, because that's been quite a journey as well, to be not afraid of speaking out about it. Thank you for sharing all of that. Uh, I, I believe that the pain and trauma really are part of those vortex openings, those wormholes that we can mm -hmm. end up going through that really do lead us uh, not only to different places, but back into a return of our natural gifts. I'd like to go back first to you talking about the permission that was given to you via the course and that you gave yourself as you moved forward. I think that that's something that many people struggle with is the permission to own their gifts or to step into something for fear of 
those around them and what they will think or who they will lose. Any wisdom around that piece based on your own experience of uh, perhaps people walking away or your own fears that that would happen or how you would be viewed? I, I really resonate with what you're talking about here. To find people who provide a safe space to be able to have conversations about energy and intuitive hits and signs and synchronicities is really, really important. And I mean, I've got to this stage now where I've just got so much factual evidence and I also sought to try to understand some of the science to satisfy my own mind. I don't need to satisfy anyone else's um, that I feel confident enough to speak out about it, but I'm pretty strong minded and I you know, I'm not hugely bothered by what other people think, <laughs> other than my dad, who's my hero. Um, and I haven't told him because he's very science-based. <laughs> so um, I think for other people, what I'm finding and why I've decided to do the Tarot Channels is, and, and the Isla Wellness Academy is to provide that safe space, to, to provide a sanctuary. Because when you speak about these things to people, um, you'll find a lot of people actually have these experiences, but they're too afraid to say something. But the tide is changing the world is changing in regard to people accessing their spirituality directly as opposed to through the medium of, of sort of other institutions. Um, so I'm very happy to be a, a, a spearhead to help people feel safe um, because I don't really care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy and confident in myself enough to do that. Um, and I think it's really important, you know, shows like yours where we can freely talk about it is, is, is such a beautiful gift that you're giving to the world, Simran. Thank you so much for that. I do believe as we each model, we we allow individuals to give permission to themselves. Mm -hmm. Heather Ogilvy believes every problem has a solution. She advocates for good inner self-worth and a balanced world of masculine and feminine energies. And she's on a mission to inspire and make a positive impact worldwide by change, challenging the scientific and business norms to recognize that nature has a profound intelligence that humanity must start to wake up to. She has written a book for young adults and she wants to provide financial education for them. This book is called Zero to Money Hero, the ultimate guide for young adults to master the art of money making. And she's applied for charitable status in Scotland to facilitate raising funds to provide schools with free copies of this book for all 15 and 16 year olds, along with motivational talks about what money really is. And so I definitely invite you to contact her if you'd like to bring that book to the young people in your area. In addition, she has the Islay Wellness Diet, a 28-day course that you can access. It is an action-packed 28 days that will reset your inner vibration so that you feel good before losing weight rather than trying to lose weight in order to feel good. In addition, if you want to learn more about animal communication, you can take her animal communication course and be able to uh, learn the incredible skill for yourself to be able to connect with your pets from day one and begin working with them. And so definitely go to her website. That's islawellness.com, I-S-L-A-Y, wellness.com. That link is also in the uh guest description on the show page. So definitely check that out. And you can check out her tarot channels, Pisces Magic Tarot, Angel's Dog Tarot, and her Isla Wellness podcast on YouTube. We'll be right back with more of Heather Ogilvy right after these messages. Voice America is on LinkedIn. Connect with us today. Do you want more, more joy, more abundance, more power and presence? How would it feel to have more loving relationships, more empowered community, greater fulfillment and life purpose? The 1111 Mastermind Community inspires, empowers, guides and supports transformation. Shift your mind, expand your heart, deepen insights, let go and chart a new course, dream a new dream. The 1111 Mastermind Community is an online portal for personal transformation and soulful expansion. Go to courses.1111mag.com. That's courses.1111mag.com. Change begins with you. 
Let it be simple, convenient, and transformative. The time is now. Step through the 1111 gateway. Courses.1111mag.com Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. It's your world. Motivate. Change. Succeed. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. Simron is an award-winning author, publisher of 1111 Magazine, powerful speaker of wisdom, and a life mentor. Find out more at IamSimron.com. Now, back to 1111 Talk Radio. Before we get back to Heather Ogilvy, I want to mention that I have released the Conversations with the Universe course. It is called Intuitive Living. And so if you're wanting to deepen into signs, symbols, and synchronicity and have an understanding of how they appear, why they appear, and all the different ways in which they appear, this is an in-depth course that I think you'll love. And so you can check that out. I also want to mention my latest trilogy. It is a Sacred Soul Oracle. You can open these books to anywhere, and I advise only reading about a paragraph. They are designed to marinate within you, and they are the three parts of you. The first book is Living, the Seven Blessings of Human Experience, and it will speak to the part of you that is identity and persona walking in the world. The second book is Being, the Seven Illusions that Derail Personal Power, Purpose, and Peace, and this will speak to all of the subconscious and unconscious parts of you, the parts of you that are creating, co-creating what's going on in this world externally, and how we can shift these parts and embrace and love them so that we do not add to the chaos that is happening outside. And the third is Knowing, the Seven Human Expressions of Grace. And these are the seven graces you must give yourself to bring yourself into more self-compassion, kindness, gentleness, and sacredness. And as you do these three, three things, you create unification, which opens the gateway to your true divine union and sacredness. So I invite you to get your set of the trilogy and keep them by your bedside, open them morning and night while you're reading other books, and they will continue to guide you into the subtle places within yourself. My guest today is Heather Ogilvy, and she is someone that does a variety of things to support individuals and the collective in growing and expanding in their awareness and stepping into their true power. She has two tarot channels, Pisces Magic Tarot and Angel's Dog Tarot, along with a YouTube podcast titled Isla Wellness, And she is a visionary empowerment catalyst hailing from Scotland. You can find out more by going to her website, islawellness.com. That's I-S-L-A-Y wellness.com. Welcome back, Heather. I want to go back to your journey of, of how you have stepped more and more into your confidence and creativity and a beautiful expression in the world. And we talked a bit about the permission that we have to give ourselves. But then you went into the whole piece around animal communication. And in my own study and through through my own experiences, I've really deepened into how we are truly human animals. And so it only makes sense that we would be able to be telepathic with these other beings. And because of their level of unconditional love and presence, 
that they would have great wisdom to share with us. Talk a little bit about what the animals are bringing forth and some of some of what their greatest messages are to us at this time and why it's so important to listen. Wow. Um, I have, I think, been bowled over by the level of detail that they have. On one level, there's a surface level when you're talking to an animal which is seeking to understand if it's okay. Um, you know, from a human perspective, we have a certain number of tools at our fingertips, such as x-rays or, you know, scans to actually get in, inside, a, to look inside an animal's body. But the fact that they can project, you know, their issues to us in a way that is helpful to them, I mean, that in, in its own right requires a level of consciousness, which, um, you know, I, I certainly didn't know that existed and is, is, you have to be very, very careful how you interpret that because they're very literal. Um, I think on a deeper level, sometimes I wonder what comes from me and what comes from an animal, but I do know for certain that there are things that have happened that I I know haven't come from me and I know haven't come from anywhere else other than when I've been concentrating, for example, on my old dog, Toba, who is now in spirit. Um, his passing over was a, a kind of a defining moment because I felt his energy after he'd left his body. And... I started working with him on the tarot channel because when I was, we were, well, my, my friends and I, when we were practicing reading, we were getting nuggets of wisdom coming through from him. And I honestly can't remember exactly what those are. But when I tune in with tarot and I work with the energy of an animal, I get much deeper messages than, and I get more images, very, very clear images from pets in particular that are supporting a message that's coming through. So the visuals that come through, I mean, they're very, very wide ranging, but they kind of, I guess, add a context to how somebody might be able to view a certain situation. Um, so it's, <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit to define it because I can't think of any specific absolute clarity moments other than just the whole interpretation of their ability to tell us and take us and, and draw us beyond our current range of knowledge and that's how it works for me so so i will get a message that will come out of my head and then i'll tune into the energy of an animal and i'll get drawn drawn further and further into a message that's much deeper than i could possibly have thought to bring it out if that makes sense it's probably yes. not really answering your question but it's it, it, it's almost an organic process and that's understandable that's that's truly understandable my first book was called Conversations with the Universe, and I started noticing the different ways that the world was speaking through us through all kinds of signs. And one of the big signs that came through were my two pets at the time, my two dogs. Wow. And what I discovered was that the very health issues they were having were actually the exact issues that were going on inside of my relationship or inside of the health of either myself or my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed that, that animals do seem to take on the health issues of their owners, I guess, in a way to probably alleviate some of their pain. When these animals come to us, are they, are they coming to us to support us in that way? Or is that something, do you feel like just energetically happens to them because of the proximity of space and their pure presence and unconditional love that they naturally become one with us. No, I, I agree with you on that that first um that first understanding. And I think that's reasonably well known amongst um the animal communication world, but I think it's actually also reasonably well talked about in the kind of veterinary, the normal mainstream veterinary world, that they will see an animal that will have a, you know, a sore leg and in limps the owner. And I think they actually try to tell us by taking on some of our pain and try to help us either alleviate some of that pain and i think you know we're seeing a rise in cancer for example in animals and i think that is because they're trying to absorb some of our toxic energy um, and just try to transmute it for us um, but i also think 
you know, a, a, any energy being, like a human being to a human being or a human being to an animal, is a reflection of who you are at any point in time. So animals are definitely there, I think, to try to help us to see ourselves in a different way, without any doubt. Um, they also, I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something which is um, a little bit out there, but I do believe somehow that they also manipulate energy. Um, and, and the reason I'm going to give you a specific example, we, we, when we were practicing, we, um, a friend's friend had a dog that drowned in a swimming pool um, and asked us to connect to it after it had crossed over to try to find out what happened. Two days before that accident, I got this horrible feed into my Instagram feed and I was scrolling through and everything's love and happiness and, you know, lovely quotes and um, paintings. And then there was this horrible image of a dog falling into a swimming pool two days before we that dog fell into a swimming pool and died and i didn't know that that, that dog lived on lives in america i live in scotland so i never never even knew about of it until my friend mentioned it two days later um so how does that work <laughs> mm. um, that that's energy in motion that's energy somehow being worked on and i've got a few more examples maybe not as granular as that where i've absolutely been sure I'm um, certainly my old dog Tober, I think um helped my husband and i make sure as we were going through a separation that we we made a we'd made a positive commitment to really work together but my old dog kept on bringing us back together in very <laughs> um uh what's the right word um almost obvious circumstances and i was just like is this dog somehow making this happen and and now reflecting back i'm just like yeah i'm absolutely sure he was i don't know how but i'm sure he was so i think they they actually have a very big influence on our energy um and, and it's not just reflecting back as this isn't it's not just um you know there to, to see because i actually think they manipulate things for us to help us on our behalf to a certain extent as well i could see that in my my prior beautiful brindle whippet was uh, my beloved pet and she passed on and i ended up having a reading from an animal communicator to just check on the passing and, and how everything was because i actually had to put her down due to mm -hmm. the amount of pain she was in and when she connected to her, she expressed that this dog had actually chosen me and come in as a spirit guide for me, which she mm -hmm. very much was. And now my current dog that I have, when I look at her face and into her eyes, I really feel like I'm looking at my other dog. <laughs> wow. And I think she's the reincarnation. And so I think, I think these energies and these animals come in for such powerful purposes and guidance in ways that we can't possibly imagine because this little four and a half pound dog that I have now has literally saved my life. And, oh. and so it's been a beautiful experience. You talked a bit about feeling empathically some of the things that would be going on with an animal or even feeling after your trauma going into a grocery store and feeling so much for individuals that are highly sensitive and empathic, I think right now is a time where there is so much that is wanting to be absorbed and transmuted that those of us that are that way, we do feel it. Mm -hmm. For myself, much of my life, I never could distinguish between what was mine and what wasn't. So as you are working with animals how do you distinguish that the earache is not yours and it actually belongs to an animal? So that bit's quite straightforward um, because if I if, if I think about the animal, it's there, and if I stop thinking about the animal, it's gone. It, it's really it's very very granular and it's in its instant. So so I can be very clear um, that it's not coming from me. Um, the other thing, the other technique for anyone who's just starting out is just to use your body as a pendulum. So if you if you just stand up straight and just lift your heels off the ground a little bit and just say, is this my pain? Lean forward for yes, body, lean back for no body to your own body um, and just allow your body to tell you because your body has as much intelligence as the animal that you're connecting to. That's it's an emotional connection. So your emotional body is connecting to the animal's emotional body and that's in your emotional body is coming from your body. It's coming from your entric nervous system. So, um, which is something like 90% of our feeling hormones are down in our gut area, which is why we have these gut feelings. Um, so your body, you can actually ask your body to tell you if you're uncertain. Um, and the other thing is automatic writing is just to get your mind out of the way and just say, is this me or not? But I, for me, I, I it's really, I, I look at the, I look at the animal, I even, I even have to look at it. I mean, most animal communicators need a, a picture, but I just, I sense the animal is there. I stop thinking about the animal is gone. 
and you train a lot of individuals to do this. Is there is there a a, a barrier or a limit to someone as easily tapping in? No, you just have to you just have to be interested and have an open mind. It's as simple as that. I mean, some people get it more quickly. I think people who are more intuitive naturally because they use that part of their body. So so people who spend more time in the right-hand side of their brain, they're more creative, for example, um, will be more tuned in um, straight away. But I haven't had anyone who hasn't received information ever. And it's a very, um, it's a transformative process because you start to understand yourself at a very different level as well. One thing that I pick up from you in hearing you talk about your journey in the different things that you do from uh, the, the Wellness Academy to animal communication to um, even, even the wellness diet course type things that you do, there's a sense of playfulness and curiosity and <laughs> uh, wonder and joy at this as, as it's, it's not, it doesn't seem like you've taken that idea of this is my purpose or I have to get this out there. It's there's not that tension that I feel sometimes in or urgency that I feel sometimes from individuals to get themselves out into the world, which feels very codependent in its energy. This feels more free. It feels more independent to where it can be tapped into with a neutrality from anyone. Is that something that you sense in yourself or can speak to? in regard to others discovering their gifts and then understanding how to hold them loosely and yet express them fully. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, if you could see me, I'm, I'm grinning from ear to ear because I, I've been in my past and probably until quite recently, really hard on myself. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I strive to achieve as well as to grow um, and growing is incredibly important to me. And if I get to a place you know, where I can't grow in a certain direction. So for example, the corporate world, I kind of ran out of places to grow to, which it made me excited because you just see the same things kind of year on year or the same problems arising. So um, the, what I love about going into the spiritual journey is just there's just an, an, an endless, limitless kind of flow of things, you know, think, new things that come in. I think the real defining moment for me um, was about actually not that long ago, Simran, it was probably about eight weeks ago, um, where I, I can't remember what I read, but I, I read something about just surrendering to your soul, just, you know, to give up the fight of the mind and actually just let that intuition be the leader of your life. And I've talked about it and I've trained people on it. And it's like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And I just decided to just let my intuition completely lead me. And that has brought unbelievable calm. You know, I spend more time sitting, I spend more time receiving information, I just spend more time being happy, being me, and being really, really um, comfortable and in balance. So so it's not it's not something that is just there naturally. Um, it has taken quite a lot of doing, um, but it's profoundly beautiful to get to it. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. It's wonderful guidance and modeling for everyone. And that kind of brings us back to full circle to to that conversation about abundance and prosperity. And mm -hmm. you write how our inner energy, creativity, and nature's resources or our own intellect are the sources of how to make money. Mm -hmm. Talk a bit about the, the inner resources that we have, the inner wealth, and how it translates to outer wealth. Yeah, um, thank you. It's, it's, it's something that I... Um, I'm really passionate about helping people teach and I and I actually really want to talk if you don't mind if, if it's okay to talk about money as opposed to abundance because I, I think people need to be able to be free to talk about money and and abundance for me there's a there's a richness in life which is emotional but money is something that's very very practical but we get caught up in what it is or that we need to chase it but I'll I will state very very clearly now and, and I would love anyone to try to defy me nobody in this world is chasing anything on the outside of them um, including money or gifts or anything like that we're all after the feelings that having money gives us and that could be security it could be uh, power it could be anything but it's the feeling that we're after not the money itself because money doesn't exist like it doesn't exist in nature it's something we made up and it's something that came about 30,000 years ago or, or ish um, when people were trading 
over long distances. So you go to a market and you know somebody you swap and you just say, right, you know, I've got something today. I need something from you tomorrow. We'll do it. We'll do a swap. But I know you. So I know you'll come back with it. Um, when you start trading with people you don't know, money is effectively an IOU node. And it became formalized so that it wasn't, you know, it's, a, it's an IOU note that everybody recognized. I mean, and for a time, money went through bamboos and clay and shells, like all sorts of objects that were valuable to other people that they could swap and they could see what it is. So how money comes about is actually what you create. And then the money is the interchange between you and someone else wanting something that you've created. And how you create something is you have this passion for creating. Um, you have the energy of your heartbeats, but also um, the zest for doing something, which is where self-worth gets in the way. Because if you have low self-worth, you just don't have much energy to want to do something. So when you're feeling good about yourself inside, you have energy, your energy. And then you can either pick up an object from nature or you can call on some information that you have in your head um, and sell it to somebody who needs who needs or wants that information. And so you your energy adds value to something. And somebody who hasn't got either the creativity or the desire to add that value themselves say, oh, that's nice. I'll, I'll buy it off you. And money just is the bit in the middle that makes that happen. And I'm not saying that having money, I mean, having money is a lovely thing because it buys you freedom. It buys you it buys you things that make you feel good, except when you don't feel good, you don't you can have as many things in the world and not feel good because you haven't got your feelings in place. So they're very, very different things. And anyone can make money um, if you understand that it's made from your energy. And what is really important is, you know, how to value yourself and value what the other person might want as well, if that makes sense. Mm, that's perfect. There's one other line that you have within that guide that you created, and it is everyone has the ability to make money, but give mm -hmm. their energy and ability to others. Mm -hmm. Express yeah. more about that. Where is it that we leak that in a way that is against us and where and how do we create that that is more for us so the i mean the, the the construct of going to work is basically saying i i have i have this energy inside me i have heartbeats i have i have life force and that life force if i apply it just to myself and to and to um like running my own business for example which means i i am busy taking things resources using my energy to create value and then I have to find an audience who wants that so the other alternative and that is that's risky because you don't know how long it's going to take you to create something you don't know how to get your audience you know it, it's your cash flow the income that you receive isn't necessarily going to be regular every single month so the alternative is to go and work for somebody who's already established that for themselves and have you know started to create quite a big inflow of money and people who want their products and so we effectively go and work for people. But what we do is we take our entire heartbeats, our capability, and we give all of our capability to someone else, all of our heartbeats that we're working for them on their project in return for a nominal amount of money. Um, and if we don't know how to value ourselves or we don't know what our energy is worth, the nominal amount of value that comes back to us will be based on what that employer thinks that you're worth to them, not what you think you're worth in return so effectively when you go and work for somebody you're renting your heartbeats to them but what we think we're doing is actually um, basically uh, have a privilege of going to work for somebody but actually the person who employs you has the privilege of having you work for them so we kind of got it the wrong, wrong way around um, but that's the way the world works um, so if you start out in life knowing how to value yourself you're probably less likely to go and work for somebody who just gets away with giving you what they can get away with as opposed to what you might actually be worth or what your potential is worth. Mm, beautiful. We have just a couple of minutes left. Okay. And I'd love for you to speak about the intelligence of energy. I am very certain because of the amount of signs and synchronicities and also in particular things like um, some of the tarot readings that I've done, I did a whole series of case studies um, because I was putting out what I understood to be accurate information, but I wanted to test it and go in at a very, very, very deep level. And there is no way the journey that I have undergone and the specific pieces of evidence that I've gathered, which I am accumulating to put into another book, 
um, because there's too many to talk about, cannot have come about by um, anything other than an intelligent force outside of me that helps make these things happen. And this is a this is an evidence based um, reflection of what's happened. But then when my conceptual brain starts to put stuff together, and I get information that isn't isn't from me. Um, and having read one or two books as well, there was a there was a gentleman who was a um, brain surgeon, Dr. Ebden Alexander, for anyone who's interested in reading his book or, or watching a video, who had meningitis, and he's he had a near death experience, and his um, uh, brain cells were completely dead, and he shouldn't have held any information, but he did. So, so science is now thinking that our memory is actually held somewhere, almost like in a cloud, like not in our heads. So, so where is that intelligence? You know, how how are we receiving information year on year? It's supposedly encoded in our DNA, but the evidence of this gentleman was that no, the information is is perhaps held somewhere else. So, so I, I've actually come to the conclusion. I, I genuinely believe that probably every single atom out there is intelligent, um, and I certainly know that animals are intelligent. I know that plants are intelligent just because of the evidence that I've gathered, which I'm, you know, piecing together. Um, and I've got some phys physics-based explanations for quite a lot that happens, for example, with telepathy. Um, but that doesn't explain how how can two days before a, a, a poor dog passes away, I get an, an Instagram feed about it. Where's that come mm. from? So energy um, is definitely intelligent. Without any doubt. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Thank you so much for being on 1111 Talk Radio. I invite you to find out more about Heather Ogilvy and what she's doing. Go to islawellness.com. That's I S L A Y wellness.com. Check out her Angel's Dog Tarot and Isla Wellness Podcast on YouTube. And if you're a Pisces, go to Pisces Magic Tarot and gain all of her wisdom along with her 28-day uh, course that is the Isla Wellness Diet and the Animal Communications course. Until next week, I am Simran, in love, of love, with love, and as love. Be well. Thank you for opening your mind to a new reality. Your heart to greater compassion and your experience of aliveness with 1111 Talk Radio. Join host Simron next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to step through the gateway of conscious living here on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Remember, you are not on the journey. You are the journey.